from Indiana. Awesome. And anybody else pop in and also let me know what brought you here. So is it because you're feeling pain and stiffness? Or are you just kind of curious? What is the reason your why for being here? I'll tell you a little bit about this work and then we'll start moving. So we're going to do a class today for the shoulders and neck. And many of us are walking around feeling pain and we think it's because we're aging. We think it's because we need to perhaps eat more greens, take more ginger. Those things are good, but usually pain points in the body are not a result of not getting enough greens or ginger. If we have overall inflammation in the body, that's one thing. If we have specific pain points like I did, I had right here. So painful, back of the shoulder, back of the neck, SI joint. I would wear bandages while I was cooking. I'd have something on my elbow, something on my wrist. I'd have those um, medicated patches. I'd wear those I'll, uh, throughout the day. I also taught yoga and my pain didn't go away with yoga. It sometimes improved a little bit after class, but then the next day would be back and sometimes worse. So that was really confounding to me. I didn't understand why I was doing all the right things, eating really wholesome foods, lots of plant foods. I'm plant-based. Also uh, moving in ways that were, you know, understood to be healthy for the body. And I was doing a ton of alternative therapies like um, chiropractic, not so alternative anymore, uh, and massage, also not so alternative, prolotherapy, where they inject um, solution, healing solution into, this, into the source, and physiotherapy, um, acupuncture. So what I discovered was all of those things helped a very little bit and for a short period of time. Chiropractic would feel somewhat better, like I'd feel great after session, but then the next day or second day would come back. And I remember my chiropractor said, how long is this holding for you? And I'd say like a few days, <laughs> a week. He said, yeah, we got to find a way to make it more sustainable. Uh, and prolotherapy was the best. It would last like a couple of weeks, but then I'd feel it creep back in. I found this system and it changed everything for me. It turned things upside down. It turned my understanding upside down and it took away the pain sustainably, which is the best part. But bonus beyond removing pain and getting more flexible because this movement will give you true flexibility not this, not just lengthening, which is what we think flexibility is. Flexibility is the health of the muscle to perform in all the ways it needs to perform, including contracting. When we move, every movement we make requires our muscles to contract. So when we reach up, the muscles are having to contract for us to reach up. When we lift a weight, contract. When we walk, contract. So we need them to contract and all we think about is lengthening. So flexibility is the ability for the muscle to contract, lengthen and rotate. And it will give you true flexibility, remove pain and stiffness and bonus, it connects with the energy meridians in Chinese medicine. And what that means is that you start to awaken these energy meridians in the body and all the systems start to behave, <laughs> behave better. They start to perform better. So your immunity gets better. Mine has greatly. Your digestion improves. You feel perhaps calmer, more restful, more at ease. The nervous system starts to regulate more. So there's all of these energetic benefits. The posture improves. Like my posture has improved so much. My shoulders used to roll in like this just naturally. And now I sit and I don't have to do this because when you work with the system, it allows the muscles to naturally contract better and stops torquing on the bones and the tendons and the attachments. The bones start to align. 
So I could go on forever because it's very exciting for me. I want to check the chat really quick. Hey, Amy. Yes, Amy's a student. She loves fashion flow. I love it, love it. Okay, yeah, we're going to get working now. Um, cool, your mom got you into, well done, mom, got you into fascia, Jesse's saying. I love that. I love it. Yes, yes. Yes, you get stronger as well with this system. So this has replaced um, strength training for me. We are actually strength training while we address the fascia, interface with the fascia, we get strength training and we get a little cardio response. Hi, Jocelyn from New Jersey. Okay, chronic neck, upper back. So let's get into that. And um, TMJ, Jocelyn, we can work your quads. I know it's going to sound like what? Work your quad tissue associated with the stomach meridian that traverses all the way up the torso and into the jaw. So folks that have TMJ and jaw tightness, when we work the stomach meridian, which we're not doing today, that will give you space and relief into the jaw over time. Just, just so you know, but this will also probably feel really good. Okay, so we're going to use a chair today. Yes, so interesting, but it's all based on the fascial plane. So the fascial plane for the stomach meridian runs up through the front of the leg, the quad muscle, into the torso, and then comes up along the jaw. So when we affect where it's really big and has lots of volume, then it starts to soften throughout the rest of the meridian, right? It's kind of like if you think um, if you have a, a kink, a kink, say, in a garden hose, and it starts to pull on the rest of the hose. It's maybe not the best analogy maybe uh, pantyhose or tights, right? If you have something that's kinked in one area, it's gonna pull on the rest. So we can bring softness, relief into another area because it's not torquing where it's most uh, full of volume and where we can address it. Okay, I'm using a chair today and two blocks. And the reason I have blocks is so that we can sit on a block to do some moves and then also use blocks on the chair as a surface. If you don't have yoga blocks, bring a big book to sit on. And then when we get working on the chair surface with the arms, you could pull up a yoga mat and put it on the chair. And I'll so show you that option as well. So everyone go get a chair, yoga blocks, get set up and get some water and we'll get started. Mm -hmm. Good. Just want to change angle a little bit. Like so. I need to move my chair. I think that's the issue. Okay, and I have my mat here in case I need to demo anything on the floor and then also to show you some things once we get going on the chair. So let's begin sitting and we're going to check in. So just take a seat and we'll check in now. So we always check in before class because when the fascia is not very healthy, when we have dense accumulated fascia, it tends to take up space in the body. And when we do this work, it helps to clear out stuck, um, accumulated, dehydrated fascia. It sloughs it off, much like buffing your feet, doing a pedicure. It sloughs it off, makes the fascia that can be rehydrated and functional again, it makes that healthier. So you'll notice before and after there's a change. So we always check in so that we have this little point of comparison. So let's begin bringing the arms and cactus, close your eyes and notice the pull in the front of the shoulders. 
Notice how it feels to hold your arms up. Rotate the palms, the hands down towards the floor, fingertips point, pointing down, pardon me. And notice the joints, the shoulder joints, how they're feeling as you rotate down and up. Everybody join in, don't just watch. Bring the elbows together, see how it feels, your range of motion, back open. Bring the hands behind the head, clasp the fingers. Bring the elbows together. Notice your range. Back open. And bring them further back. Mm -hmm. Good. And then bring your hands down by your side and let's lift them up to the top over your head. Again, don't push if you have any restriction and back down. And then in front of your body, lifting up and back down. Good, we shall get started. Now we're going to sit on one or two blocks or books. So get them on the back of your chair and then sit up on the blocks. Now the reason we're doing this on the blocks is because we want to put our foot on the chair. And if we're not on the blocks, it can feel really uncomfortable to do that. So this lifts up the seat so we can um, put the heel on a chair. If you have a stool, that will work as well. Sit on a chair and use a little stool for the foot. So we're going to begin with the left side. Left knee is bent on the chair. Bring the left elbow inside the knee. Push the elbow and the knee together so the knee is not flopping out like so. Feel that um, leverage between the two points. Now reach around and bring your right hand on the back of the left wrist. The left wrist wants to go to the left and now your right hand is going to push down towards the floor, keeping the resistance in the left arm. Release the resistance here. Flex. So the fascia flow formula is flex. We contract the muscle. We find resistance. Lengthen. We move through the phase of lengthening, keeping the resistance. And then we observe when the resistance stops or starts to fade and we release it. So we're only resisting on the way down here pushing the left arm up into the cup of the right, and then we release it to start again. So we're lengthening with contraction. And the more you also engage the elbow into the inside of the left knee, that will increase the resistance. So flex, left hand wants to go left, right hand is pumping it down towards the floor. Release it on the way up, resisting here, resisting the left arm into the cup of the right. And your right hand should be on your wrist here. We want it on the joint to stabilize. Flex, pushing back with the left, lengthening, observe, release. Flex, resisting, noticing where the resistance fades here. Stop, let it go on the way up and repeat. So we're gonna do a few more on this side. And this is connecting with our small intestine in Chinese medicine. And you can feel the muscles engaging here on the back of the shoulder, the rotator cuff muscles. Flex, lengthen, observe, and one more. Good. Shake out the arm, switch legs. So bring the right leg up now. Hook the left elbow on the outside of the right leg. We're going to do the same thing, taking the back of the wrist. This time the hand is trying to sweep forward and you're pulling the hand back towards the right hip. Release, sweeping front and pulling back towards the hip. If it's hard to reach your elbow around that knee, it can be, depending on length of the arms, keep it inside the left knee and just change the pump. So we are going straight down now we're going straight to the belly. So not down to the floor, but back into the waist. So you're trying to sweep out front, resisting into the right hand and pumping it back towards the belly with resistance. So either way, flex, resisting back with the left hand lengthening by dragging that arm back like it's moving through mud. Flex, lengthen, observe, release. 
So we want to notice where the resistance maybe fades or drops off because we don't want to go into end range without resistance. That's how we stretch traditionally. That's what gets us into trouble because it creates little micro tears in the muscles. And the body has to go back in and repair the micro tears like little band-aids of fascia and becomes dense and accumulated again. When we stay in resistance, we don't go into that danger zone. We keep the joint out of play. We stay in the belly of the muscle. And changing the fascia with this magic formula of engagement plus elongation. And that reconfigures the fascia from the inside out, like a sloughing away, like a pedicure. And makes the fascia healthier, hydrated, more pliable, more slide and glide so the joints feel great again. One more like that. Good, shake out the arm. Just notice one shoulder to the other right now. So just kind of close your eyes and check in. How's that shoulder feeling? We're gonna do one more version on the left arm and then do a check-in. So we're taking cactus arm with the left arm now. Bring the right hand and take the outside, the back of the elbow. Left arm's trying to go behind you, resisting into the cup of the right hand. And then the right hand is going to drag that arm in front of the body. Release it to set up again. Left arm's trying to go back, resisting into the cup of the right hand. Drag it in front of your body slowly. Release. Flex. Push arm back towards the wall behind you. L. Lengthen. Observe now where your resistance gets shaky, fades, stop, release, and reset. Because the traditional version of this stretch is this. This is how we've done that stretch. That's end range and it goes into the joint. When we do this, we feel it in the joint. We want to stay with resistance, release, flex, lengthen, observe. This is the meridian for the large intestine in Chinese medicine. And you can feel the, the thickness of the resistance on the top and outside of the shoulder here, back, uh, back outside of the shoulder into the deltoids. Flex, lengthen, observe. Good, last one. Release the arms, roll the shoulders. Maybe look at your shoulders in your little window here. Do you see that this shoulder has softened down? How does it feel to hold your arms down? So I'm feeling a lot of external rotation on the left side, and that's how our arms should set up. That's our anatomical position is an external rotation. Most of us are more like this. So just notice that. And now bring arms up into cactus. So fun to check in. Notice the left, notice the right. Can you feel space in the left here? No pull, no tension. We didn't work the, the front here, but this is where we're creating space because the muscle in the back can shorten, contract now. Elbows together, good, and back open. Rotate down and back up. Bring the elbows behind the head. Bring elbows together, hands behind the head, pardon me. And one check-in we didn't do and I wanna do before we go to the other side is looking up. So bring your head chin to chest, forgot this one, and then look up. And now look over the left shoulder and the right. Oh wow, what a difference looking left and right after doing one side. Can you feel that? Looking over the left shoulder feels quite difficult. Looking over the right feels pretty easeful. Good. So we want to take it to the other side because it's feeling a little bit left out now. So we're going to bring the right elbow inside the right knee. I'll answer questions after class for sure. So stay with me and join. If you're watching, join. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. It feels too good. Bring the left hand and take the back of the right wrist. So now the right hand is trying to pump right and you're pushing it down with the left. Another way to think of it is that the right hand is trying to stay upright. It doesn't want to move. And then the left hand is your helper to pump it down. 
So the right hand wants to win, the left hand wins. So we flex, we find the resistance at the start, lengthen, move through the range of motion with resistance. Notice where the resistance fades. That's when you stop, let it all go and start again. Flex, lengthen, let it all go. So we're resisting in one direction. And this is creating that beautiful uh, reconfiguration, transformation of the fascia from the inside out and the deeper layers of fascia that we cannot get to from other forms of manipulation like massage or any myofascial release from the outside in when we're working the skin, we wouldn't get to these deep layers. It would be too painful resisting back and pushing down. And as you can tell, this isn't painful. It's a little bit of work, but it's not painful and it will take pain out of the body. Flex. Lengthen, observe one more. Back and in small intestine for this one. Good, so now we're gonna switch the leg. So again, if it's hard to reach around the other leg, you're gonna stay right here and then bring the back of the fist towards the wall in front of you. And you're trying to sweep forward and then the left hand draws it back towards the rib cage or the waist. So right hand's trying to push forward and left hand is drawing it back towards the waist. Otherwise, we switch legs, wrap around, elbow outside the knee, again, taking the back of the wrist, trying to stay in place or push back and the right is dragging it back towards the hip. Flex, right hand is pushing into the cup of the left and the left hand is dragging it back towards the hip. I think I just said right hand before, so that was a little error. <laughs> the right hand is our target and the left hand is the helper dragging it back towards the hip. Mm -hmm. Flex, pushing back into the cup of the left hand. Left hand brings that arm back towards the hip. Notice your range of motion. Go as far as you keep resistance, and when the resistance starts to get shaky, you stop and reset, flex. And now we're lengthening. Observe, release to start again. So we just do a number of reps through this magic formula to create that change. The flow formula, it's contraction of the muscle, flex, lengthening or elongating, and always observing, noticing what's going on in the body. One more. Good, shake out the arms. And now we're gonna come to cactus on the right. Bring the left hand around and take the back of the elbow again, pushing the arm back towards the wall behind you, using the left hand to slowly drag that arm in front of the face, release. Right hand is trying to push back, wants to win. Left hand is winning by slowly dragging that arm in front. Now, you need to sort of assess the resistance. Some of us can resist a lot, and it's really hard to move the limb. So you guys stay with your reps. But if I, I just want to show you, if you're resisting all your max here, if I'm resisting all my max, and I am, I'm not moving the arm. So I need to dial it down to like maybe a 4 or 5 out of 10, because Fascia has more resistance, more strength than your muscles. So we need to moderate that level of resistance to affect the change. And we want the change in the, in the tissues. And the other bonus to this, so we're back in large intestine. So this helps the health of the large intestine. And the other bonus is that the little cells that take care of the fascia, the fibroblasts, they continue to work overnight, even when you sleep. Resisting here, lengthening, keeping the resistance, noticing where it fades, stop, reset one more. So good. Good, shake out the arms, yeah. Feels nice, right? Roll it back. We're gonna do a little bit more for the um, upper body before we finish and check in. I wanna do a couple more actually. So let's come to standing and we're gonna use the back of the chair so we did a lot for the back of the shoulders. Now we're gonna come into the chest. So we're gonna take that cactus arm once again with the left arm and land it on the surface of your chair, the top of your chair. 
So you're pushing this cactus arm down towards the floor. That's your flex. Now we lengthen by dipping torso down. Observe, release it, come back up, flex. Push the cactus arm down into the back of the chair. Now I'm really being mindful of my range here because we are tempted in our culture to go after that, oh, I feel it sensation down here. That's what we're staying away from. That's what's causing the micro tears in the tissues. That's what's causing pain and stiffness because we're stretching, moving into these end ranges. And it's not how animals stretch. So <laughs> as I said that, the cat jumped down. Too funny timing. Flex, push down into the top of the chair and lengthen. Observe, release it to come back up. So resisting here. Noticing where the resistance changes, let it go, come up. And this is accessing the lung meridian in Chinese medicine. One more. Good. We're going to switch sides. You can roll out the arms, take it to the other side. You can just turn around. I like to obviously still face you and not have my butt at your face. So I turn my chair, taking cactus arm with the right, landing it on the top of the chair, pushing down towards the floor. Flex, lengthen, serve. So really notice that end range. Really notice where you're tempted to go, oh yeah. You can see I'm barely going past 90 degrees. I don't even think I am. I'm at 90 now and that's where I stop and reset because I want to stay in the belly of the muscle, the tissue. When you contract, you're feeling your pec engage here and into the bicep. You want to stay there. You don't want to go into the joint with it. So less range with more resistance is better than bigger range. Always, always. If you're just moving here a couple of inches, that's going to give you change and it's going to keep you out of the danger zone in the joint as long as you're keeping that resistance when you move. Flex, lengthen, observe. So I was saying about animals, it's how animals stretch. You notice when they are on the floor and they reach their little paws out and they pull on the surface before they lengthen. They're doing that naturally. It's called pandiculation. You can Google it, pandiculation. And we also do it when we take a body stretch in the morning. It's the tension with the lengthening. So now we're doing it for the major muscle groups in the body and bringing relief where we really, really need it. Last couple, I think we did more on this side. So let's say this is the last one. <laughs> Good. Roll the shoulders, shake out the arms. So now we're gonna come to the seat of the chair for a couple more. And I'm using my blocks on the chair so that I can land my arms on the blocks and work with that surface. If you don't have blocks, you can bring a yoga mat and place it right on top of your chair so you have some grip for the arms. Just want something a little soft and grippy for the arms to work on. And that's why I like to use the blocks because they don't get in the way like a mat. Okay, so we have our blocks on the chair. We're going to land our arms straight on the blocks. And our elbows are going to initiate the movement here. So just allow your elbows to be somewhat wide on the blocks. You can space out your blocks so that they're not side by side. And your elbows are going to pull back towards your legs. Begin by bringing your face over your hands. Now make that movement of pulling the elbows back towards the legs and then pull the body back. Sherlock wants center stage here. Hands come back, head comes back over the hands. Pull elbows back towards the legs. Send the bum back. Release. Head comes over the hands. Find that resistance here. Flex is pulling elbows back towards the legs and then you send the bum back to lengthen. Couple more. Yeah. So you can turn the nose side to side. It may feel real nice to do that. Bring the head over the hands. Flex by pulling elbows back towards the legs. 
Lengthen by shifting the weight back, sending the bum back. How about two more? And last one. Good. Now we're staying on the blocks, but we're going to flip our arms. So right now our arms are with thumbs pointing up. We're going to flip so that the palms are facing up. So the backs of the arms are on the mat or on the chair or on the blocks. Palms facing up. I've slipped my blocks a little closer together. So you may want to do that as well. This time we're going to punch forward. So you can see that movement where I'm pushing forward with the arms. It's as if you could do this, lift the arms up over the head. We begin sinking the weight back over the heels. Punch forward. Keep punching forward now and begin to bring the body over the fists. Release, come back, punch forward with the fists, keep punching forward, find that resistance the whole way through, notice where it changes, stop, release, punch forward, this is our flex, we lengthen by bringing the face over the palms, release, so you should feel pressure in the top of the shoulders here, that's what we're going after, this particular move is really good for the immune system too, so this time of year is a tricky time. We get um, we get excited to go outside and it's still kind of cold and we sometimes get vulnerable. Our systems um, take a little bit of a hit. So working on this internal immune system here associated with the thymus gland is really good for your immune system, plus frees up the shoulders. How about two more punching forward? Sending the face over the fists, and one more. Good. Come take a seat. There's a whole lot more I could do with you, but I think that's enough for today, and I want to check in with everyone. So take a seat, and just perhaps notice, wow, heart rate is picked up, right? You can feel like you just did a workout, because when we do this work, we are strength training, getting a cardio response, changing the fascia, making the muscles, muscles, <laughs> muscles more truly flexible, and really energizing the body from the inside out. Yeah, so just let your breath settle as you check in. Yeah, let it regulate just for a moment. And let's start how we finished last time. So let's look over the right shoulder and the left. Notice how that feels now. Chin to the chest and look up and back down. Good, and let's take our cactus. Still feels good, rotate through, back up, arms back together. Does it feel smoother? Does it feel more easeful to move the arms in space? Does it feel lighter in the joints? Arms behind the head. Bring elbows back and together. Good. Let the arms fall down by your side and take one nice big inhale to finish. And let it go. Good. I'm going to come up and see what questions there are that you might have. And um, if anyone wants to do a little extra, we can throw in another extra exercise or two. But let's see how everyone's doing. Um. Raw vegan van life. Is that the exercise where you kick up and bring down with the other foot? For the stomach, Meridian? It is. I think that's what you mean. The stomach pumps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Amy's saying, yeah, Amy's saying she had trouble with three herniated discs in her neck a few years ago. Between yoga and PT, I did so many exercises to help my posture, but nothing has been as effective as these exercises. That's wonderful. That is 
Wonderful, Amy. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's amazing. You're welcome, Jesse. Yeah, and there's, yeah, <laughs> Amy, I'm with you. Too much staring at the computer. So when we're at the computer, right, there's a lot of, it just naturally happens. And when we can work into the long area here, help bring some space, and of course, into the neck, um, and when you do a little bit of this every day, like 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, it's so transformational. And so I really encourage you guys to, um, if you haven't been on my site, to hop over and go take in some more free classes because you can go over link through to where you sign up for my newsletter and it will send you free classes and then you can get updates about what's going on yeah jocelyn easier to bring your cactus arms mm -hmm. oh awesome mary wonderful is it the first time you've done it mary first time you've done any fascia work um demonstrate the arm position when you're standing behind the chair is the arm straight? Um, I'm not sure which one that was. Was it this one? When I was like this? If that's the one you mean, Melanie, I can demonstrate it again. I'm not sure if that's the one you meant. I don't think I was behind a chair. I was next to it. So I'm... yes. Okay, cool. So we take cactus arm. So our arm is like in goal post. Um, and we land it on the top of the chair. So the lower part of your arm to the elbow is on the chair and you're resisting down towards the floor and then keeping that resistance as you lower the torso towards the floor, that's creating the lengthening. And then you come back up. So you resist down and then you release it to come up and you resist down and you release to come back up. And then the buddy meridian for that one, that was lung. And in Chinese medicine, our organs are paired. So we did large intestine. And that was the um, yang organ to the yin of lung. And we were doing that moving across like this with resistance. So you can see there's similar shape and we're working one side and then the other. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, raw vegan van life. Where in your neck are you feeling it? Still crinked, a little crinked. Back of back here, sort of. In the back of the neck, under the skull. I might give another one for you guys to try. Um, yeah. So guys, pop to my site and try the other classes. Yeah, I had it too. I had it too. Um, so one thing that we didn't do today, which does help the neck as well, is the lower body. And it's hard to imagine that it can have impact. But this chain of fascia associated with the gallbladder meridian, it runs up the side of the body and comes up into those suboccipital muscles here right under the skull so when we do work with the gallbladder i had to to relieve this area here that really helped but i'm going to show another one standing that will also maybe give some benefit so we're going to come back to the chair and bring the hands on the top of the chair turning the hands in slightly Push the hands into the chair, pushing hands into the chair, and then lowering the torso and head through the arms. Release to come back up. So everybody do this. We'll do a couple more. I'm gonna give you a couple more things to work with. Pushing hands into the top of the chair, lowering the head, torso through the arms. So this is working with the heart meridian in Chinese medicine. And although we're working the front of the body here, which seems counterintuitive to where the pain is, it's often related because the pain that we're feeling is not usually the source of the pain. Often where we're feeling the pain is the symptom. And there's another muscle group that's not functioning well. 
And that's creating that other muscle group that where we're feeling the pain to overwork, release to come back up, flex, push down into the chair. Imagine spinning the thumbs in towards the chest, like you're turning your hands in on a dial, like you're trying to turn them in as you come down. And one more. Good, and we're gonna do a little bit more for its buddy meridian. Now that was heart, and I'm coming back to my chair and bringing my blocks on the chair again and sitting up on the blocks. Feet on the chair, you can do this on the mat as well, but I decided to make everything me friendly today. So now we look funny, but that's cool. <laughs> I'm used to being a little odd. Pushing hands together and elbows into the inside of the knees squeeze hands together you can do this on the floor as well and you don't need to sit well it helps to sit up on a block but you can do this on the floor as well if sitting on the chair isn't very accessible squeeze hands together and elbows to the inside of the knees use the knees to press the elbows together release flex push the hands together push elbows into the knees use the knees to bring the elbows together release flex push hands together use the knees to bring the arms together release flex push hands together elbows to the inside of the knees bring elbows together let's do two more so the heart and small intestine are buddy organs and when we work one and then the other we get a little more out of it we did some small intestine at the beginning but tapping into heart just now then makes this a little more accessible. Good. And release. So check in a little bit on that. See how that's feeling. It may be a little easier to look up now after doing that. Notice. Yeah. And also, yes, sometimes it's a matter of reps, right? We get a little bit of space after doing it once. And then we do another session another day, we feel a bit more space. And then after a week or two, it's like, wow, I feel like a new person. Um, okay, frozen shoulders. So Marie, we have some specific um, exercises for frozen, sh uh, frozen shoulder. Um, if you go to my site and sign up and then send me an email, I'll give you a little bit more info on that. Um, we didn't do them today. Well, we did one, but there's one that really helps. It's for the appendix and thymus help for frozen shoulder. And I could give you a little more into that. Um, S. Follender, how many reps are good? Uh, it depends, really depends on what's happening in your body. Like how much density is there? If we're trying to change the tissue on the back of the body, the hamstrings, which we didn't even touch, but when the hamstrings are dense with tissue, dense with fascia, it affects the tilt of the pelvis, pulls on the pelvis, we get low back pain. It affects the positioning of the shoulders, which also creates pain in the neck. Um, it creates pain in the knees. So we really need to address the hamstrings, which we didn't do today, but in our sessions we do, and in the free classes, we do hamstrings. So. If we have an area that just has some tenseness, like usually the front of the body, you may need to do usually about, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a day of reps. But if you have a lot of density, scar tissue, it may take more reps, it may take more time. Um, a little bit every day makes a difference. Like 10 to 15 minutes a day is gold. Good, good, Deb, yeah, good. Okay, great, good, good, good. Okay, so I added my site there. You guys can go um, link through unless you have any other questions and um, I'll let you go. Cool, thanks for joining everyone. It's nice to hear from you and where you all are joining and um, we'll do another free class soon, okay? We'll see you, bye-bye. You're welcome, bye-bye.